Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about drone regulations and specifically regulations in the United States when it comes to little drones like this one or anything really that's less than 250 grams. Okay, so I know talking about drone regulations is extremely boring and you don't want to just sit here and watch me talking to my computer for a long time about these regulations. So I thought I'd throw in some flight footage of a recent uh, outing I had where I was chasing Justin's fixed-wing airplane around. He's kind of learning how to handle this new airplane he got in the wind. It's a little windy out there this day, and he's testing things out, and this is the first time I've chased an airplane like this either. And I thought watching this in the background while I'm talking about drone regulations would make this video a little bit more entertaining. So, with that, let's get into the sub-250 gram drone regulations in the United States. If you have spent any time at all on the internet, you'll have noticed that there's a lot of questions surrounding the rules and regulations when it comes to sub-250 grams or 0.55 pound drones in the United States. People will ask questions and people who have been taught the wrong information will respond and it perpetuates this. Not exactly sure where it comes from, but part of it has to do with the fact that every country has different regulations and sometimes people don't specify which country they're in. And so places like Canada recently, in the past few years, have some very lax rules when it comes to sub-250 gram drones. Whereas in the United States, there's really no difference at all, depending on the weight of your drone. So I think that's partially where it comes from. And also the drone regulations overall have been changing quite a bit in the past few years. And someone may be repeating something that existed a few years ago, and that's just not the case now. So what I'm trying to do here in this video is explain what the drone regulations in the United States are at this time, which happens to be middle end of August 2020. And what you really need to know is that being under 250 grams doesn't really gain you anything. There's one tiny difference, and that is if you're out flying purely for fun, totally recreational, then you as a pilot don't need to be registered with the FAA to fly a drone or model aircraft that is less than 250 grams. However, if you're flying commercially under part 107 and you are flying a tiny drone, even that one I showed in the beginning that's only like 35 grams, you need to be registered. You have to have your registration information on that drone. All the other regulations apply to you, no matter what, as long as it weighs less than 55 pounds. If it's more than 55 pounds or 25 kilograms, then there's a whole different set of rules, I think, which none of us are really flying that. So let's go over that then. What are the rules if you're flying a drone that's uh, less than 250 grams? Well, <laughs> those same rules are even if it's like a pound or 300 grams or 500 grams. This was changed back in... 2018 with the FAA Reauthorization Act, and there's they never specify anything about a lower limit on the weight. Uh, so you still have to follow those same basic rules, such as if you're flying in controlled airspace, you need to use Lance to get authorization. You must have a visual observer co-located with you that can see the UAV or drone if you're flying FPV. You must stay below 400 feet above ground level or the maximum height allowed by Lance for the area you're flying if you're closer to an airport or controlled airspace. You have to follow all the FAA airspace restrictions, including TFRs and NOTAMs. So technically, uh, the president was recently nearby. There was a TFR saying you can't fly anything within 30, 40 miles of the airport. It would have been illegal or against these regulations for me to take my tiny whoop, my 35 gram drone, and go out and fly in my backyard because I live too close to the airport. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's what the regulations are today. Uh, it also states that you should never fly near other aircraft. I assume that means manned aircraft because otherwise flying this close to this RC airplane would be against the rules. 
uh, always give way to all other aircraft, never fly over groups of people, never fly near emergency response activities, and never fly under the influence of drugs or alcohol. So as you can see, the FAA does not make any distinction whatsoever about the weight, as long as it's less than 25 kilograms or 55 pounds. Now, some of the other confusion comes from those re registration requirements, and those were struck down and then they were reinstated, and that's in a whole different set of legislation than from this FAA Reauthorization Act in 2018. But that gets us to what's going to happen in the future. Well, we know that remote ID is coming. The FAA has been saying now for a little while that they want to release the final ruling on remote ID this December, so December 2020. We don't yet know exactly what's going to be in that, but it's pretty clear that they're probably going to have an exception for use of drones that are less than 250 grams that I don't know if they won't have to comply with remote ID at all or if they'll have much less strict rules. Um, hopefully there are basically no rules, but we won't know that until it happens. So for now, that is something that you just uh, don't even worry about that because those and those rules won't take effect for two or three years after this December anyway. If you have any additional questions or concerns about this, definitely check out the FPV Freedom Coalition's website on the regulations pertaining to sub 250 gram drones. And definitely leave a comment down in the bottom of this video if you've got other questions that I could hopefully help answer for you. And otherwise, uh, just have fun and safe flying.